Our song today, For God on the Go, is Lift High the Cross. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Led by thy way, by this triumphant sign, the host of God in conquering ranks combined. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Each newborn servant of the crucified bears on the brow the seal of him who died. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim till all the world adore his sacred name. So shall our song of triumph ever be praise to the crucified for victory. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim till all the world adore his sacred name. Good morning, I'm the Reverend Lisa Borns. I'm the rector here at Holy Trinity Episcopal Church in Essex, and this is our God on the Go lesson. Our reading this morning is Psalm 1, and we'll be using our God's Word, My Voice, a lectionary for children. You're a happy one if you haven't fallen with people who want to lead you in the wrong direction or make fun of others or think of ways to cause harm. You're happy if God's way has become your way and you know God's word inside and out. You're like a tree planted right by the water and you grow a basket full of fruit at the right time of year and your leaves are always green. It's like everything you do turns out right. You're happy if God's way has become your way, and you know God's word inside and out. Not so with the troublemakers. They are more like chaff, the waste from ground wheat, which the wind just blows away. Nothing comes of what they do. You're happy if God's way has become your way, and you know God's word inside and out. Those people will never be able to stand up straight in front of God. God knows the way of good people, but if you enjoy being wicked, your way is doomed to fail. You're happy if God's way has become your way, and you know God's word inside and out. Who here likes to read? I think you all can tell that I like to read. <laughs> I love having books about me, and for me there is nothing like the physicality of a book to bring about a memory uh, of a book that I've read before, but to also tell a new story in a new way, either through a new book that I haven't read before or from reading an old book that I've enjoyed many, many times. Books are filled with amazing stories. Some can be fiction, some can be fact, some can be a mix of both. But they take us to a particular place and a particular point of view with the characters or with the people that uh, the story is about. So think about your favorite book and share that with someone in your household and ask them about their favorite book and see what they say. And if you don't have a favorite book, that's okay. Maybe you're also like me 
and your favorite book has changed over time. Um, I remember when I was growing up, I loved a picture book that we had that was full of birds. There wasn't much text in it, but I was very young at the time. And so I got to enjoy the pictures of seeing all these different birds, these beautiful birds that God created, and to be able to tell their story of where they lived, what how they had adapted to the environment where they are, what they like to eat. And that was intriguing to me. Now, as I grew older, I particularly enjoyed the Harry Potter series that was coming out when I was in middle school and in high school because of the deep friendships of the characters and how they truly lived what they held most precious in their lives in caring for their friends and for uh, themselves at the same time. And books are great because they can be with us and for us anything at any point in our lives. They can be pictures or windows into part of creation, or they can be uh, fictional stories that reveal things that are really important to us through what's important to the characters. And they can teach us exciting stories, especially when we think about the characters in the books. So maybe, do you have a, if you have a favorite book, do you have a favorite character in that book? I remember thinking back to all the way to that bird book. I loved the Kingfisher. Not only did it have this big, beautiful, splashy page uh, when some of the other birds were just grouped by themselves, but it not only flew, which I have always found intriguing, but it would also dive, dive deep to get fish underwater. And so that was something that I always enjoyed swimming and I found really exciting as a kid in the Kingfisher. And now in the Harry Potter series, I really enjoyed Hermione Granger because she was never afraid to speak her mind, always, always stood up for what she knew to be best and right and true. I love to read. And I also love one of my favorite books that actually continues to work on and continue to evolve and change my life as well. And it's the Bible. It's one of my favorite books. And there's many times in my life where I've enjoyed different aspects, different characters for different reasons. And that can even change from week to week, depending upon what's being shared in our lectionary, what our reading is. And sometimes I also find myself, myself wondering more about the author and what drove the author, what their relationship with God uh, drew them to write in a particular scripture, um, as opposed to thinking about the actual people that are in the stories as well. So that's something I find very intriguing about the Bible. And we also have to think about that this is one of the greatest books of all time, not only because it is God's word uh, that has been written down by human beings, so it's sharing God's story with us, um, but it's also not just one book. It's a library of books within this one binding. There's lots and lots of different books. And as I said, it does contain God's word to us as written down by God's faithful people through time. And the having this compilation of different books is helpful to hear God's story as God continues to lead us, comfort us, instruct us, and encourage us by reminding us that we continue to be God's people even in our own time, and even for the people who are not even born yet, they are also God's people, and it's all contained within this book. It's part of the unfolding story of God, the beautiful world that God has created. Part of it is written in this story, but we also get to write about that in our own lives, how we live our lives for God in this moment. It's also part of the unwritten part of God's story that's continuing to unfold right here, right now, in this space at Holy Trinity, but also where you are, whether you are a parishioner at St. Philip's in Richmond or a parishioner at St. George's in Maplewood. God is present with us 
and part of our stories in our own day and in our own places where we live and where we worship as well. Now, our Bible, as I said, is a library. There are 66 books in the Bible. There are 39 books in the Old Testament, and there are 27 books in the New Testament. That's a lot, isn't it? That's a lot of books just in here. All behind me is a whole slew of a library, but there's also a library contained in here as well. And God's Word is this whole unfolding story. The story of the Bible is about the one true God who created everything and loves everyone, all of us, and sent his son Jesus to remind us of that and to show forth God's love and God's care for all of God's people in the stories that we have in this library, but also as we continue to reflect on them in our own time, in our own day, in our own lives. God is always teaching us something new. And this is exciting because it means that God's word in the Bible and the story of God in our world is continuing to be written and written in our very lives and in our very experiences that we are having right here and right now. We all get to be a part of God's unfolding story in this world by being in worship at home or in church, by learning about God in this very online program that we're doing, and by continuing to read God's word, to hear what God has to say for us in this Bible so that we can truly know God's word inside and out. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the Bible. We are grateful that you love us so much, that there were faithful people who wrote down your word and their stories, that we may continue to reflect on them and where we see you at work in our lives as well. Help us to ever read and mark and learn from you, that we may ever take delight in your word. We lift this in Jesus' name. Amen. And our reflection question this week is where do you see God's joy in your life's story? Where do you see God's joy in your own life's story? So I hope that offers some reflection for you all. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.